What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now, a slight departure from the normal programming, but I've had a bunch of questions from you guys about setting up a YouTube channel. And I thought rather than doing a wall of text and messaging you all back, I'd make a video on it and show you the equipment that I'm using to make my videos. Now I am by far and away not an expert with any of this stuff when it comes to sound, when it comes to software, when it comes to editing. I'm learning this as I go along, as I'm growing my channel, but I've bought a few things. I might be able to save you a few pound. I might be able to give you a small bit of advice. I'll give you a demonstration on all these mics, what they sound like, what I recommend, and I'll show you what I use. And hopefully this will help you guys out in starting your YouTube channel. So let's do it. Okay, let's jump into this, and it is unbelievably cold in this shed, so uh, we'll try and make this as quick as possible. So the first piece of advice I have for you is to just jump in, do it, start making videos. I started off on a camera phone, and uh, the picture on a camera phone these days is amazing. The sound is not great, but the picture is top quality on some of them, and it will be full HD, so that's good enough to make YouTube videos with. Now, everybody who starts talking to a camera for the first time will feel completely weird. There's no one else in the room, only you and the camera, and you'll still feel embarrassed. That's perfectly natural. It'll take a hundred takes just to say the first line of the sentence that you want to get out of your mouth. Again, that's 100% natural. As you progress, you will get better at this. So there'll be a huge difference between video one and video 10 and video 10 and video 100. And you'll look back and you'll see. I look back at my very first videos now and they're pretty hilarious to me. And uh, I'm only beginning this journey. So I'm only getting to grips with the camera technology, the mics and the software. And I'll take you through all that now in a minute. But that's the first piece of advice I would give you. You said just jump in, start making your videos. It is unnatural for everybody when they start doing it and you will feel weird, that's okay. Do it badly, but get doing it. And uh, yeah, that's the first piece of advice. Now, like I said, I started on a camera phone. I'll show you the mic I bought for the camera phone then. I'll show you the next upgrade I made, which was to change to a Canon DSLR camera. I'll take you through that. And I'll show you the difference in sound and picture quality. So yeah, let's start off. I will show you the camera phone. Then we'll stick on the shotgun mic that I bought for the camera phone. And then we will switch to the Canon camera, then we will stick on the shotgun mic for the Canon camera, and then oh, you're already listening to me on the lapel mic, which is what I recommend you get if you can, if you can, if you have the budget for it, this is the way to go, especially if you want to make videos like I'm making them. If you're going to do it in your workshop, having a lapel mic is the way to go, and I'll show you that now. So let's jump in. Let's start with this camera phone. Right, this is a Samsung S7. This just happens to be my camera phone. It's about four years old now, but it's the one I started making videos with. And I recommend if you're going to do it with your camera phone, get yourself one of these Joby um, tripods. They're great. The base on them or the three feet are magnetic and you can wrap and tie this around anything. It's very, very handy for mounting your camera all different places. And uh, you can usually, either if you're working on a bandsaw and that, it will stick to the side of the machine so you can get close up shots of what you're actually working on. It's very, very handy. This is the video mic me. This is like a little shotgun mic that you can add on to your um, camera. I know it works with the Samsung and the iPhone. I'm not sure about the rest of them, so just check that. I will leave links in the description to everything you see here if you wanna go check this stuff out for yourself. But for now, let's show you the quality on the camera phone. I'll show you the mic and the camera phone and then we'll stick this on and you can hear the difference. So let's do that. Okay, so I have the camera phone set up on the tripod alongside the Canon camera now. So I'm on the Canon camera, you can hear me on the lapel mic. Now I'm going to switch over to the camera phone. Okay, so here's the camera phone, so you can hear what it sounds like. You can see the picture, it'll be slightly more zoomed in. Um, obviously you don't have as much options on the camera phone and you're using the camera mic. So it's going to be the ambient noise in the room, it's not going to be just from the lapel mic. And here, are me. here I am switching back to the camera using the lapel mic, so now you can hear the difference. Okay, here we are on the camera phone with the Rode Video Mic Me plugged in. I'm about a meter, two meters from the camera, so that's what, just over four feet, five feet from the camera. So you can hear what I'm saying now. I will now pull the mic and go back to the cat, just to the built-in mic on the phone, so you can hear the difference and see if this is for you. Okay, so now we have this mic pulled out. We are just back on the camera itself. So hopefully now you can hear the difference in that. 
Right, there we go. That was the Samsung S7 camera phone along with the Video Mic Me. And this is just a good little option. If you want to get started, you haven't got a much of a budget, you probably already have a camera phone. So that's just a little sound enhancement that you can add um, for not much money. And it's a good little kit just to get you started and getting you making videos. Now we will look at the Video Mic Pro. This was the next mic I bought and uh, it's great shot quality shotgun mic it has like a db boost and everything you need but it's not ideal for the type of videoing i'm doing which is why i bought the lapel mic but i'll show you the difference between this now and the lapel mic and i'll show you where a shotgun mic is good and where it lets you down so let's check this out now okay so we are back on the canon 800d camera with the lapel mic and the reason you use the lapel mic and why it's so good for the type of videos that I'm doing is that I'm moving around the workshop. You guys can still hear me. So I can walk over here, you can hear me perfectly. I can head off down the back of the camera. You can still hear me talking, no problems. I can move around, I can get things, I can work at different tools and the volume stays constant. You guys can hear me. Like I say, I can walk around and it gives me freedom to move. I don't have to be facing the camera. So now I'm going to show you the difference once I plug in this shotgun mic. Here it is. Okay, here is the shotgun mic. You can probably hear the difference already. It's a bit more ambient. It picks up a little bit more of the surrounding sound and it won't be as clear. I won't sound as close in the camera. But it's actually quite fine as long as I keep it right there in front of me. But as you see, once I start to move around, I start to face away from the shotgun mic. I come around the back of the camera. The sound dips off. It's not, I'm not in the cone of the sound or where the microphone actually picks you up, which is directly in front of it. These are great if you're just gonna sit in front of the camera and talk and you're always facing the camera. But if you wanna make the kind of videos that I'm making, you're gonna need a lapel mic. So you can see again, as I walk away, start talking over here. You guys can probably barely hear me. So yeah, I recommend the lapel mic if these are the type of videos you wanna make. But if you wanna sit in front of the camera and just vlog a shotgun mic, is ideal. So let's switch back to the lapel mic. Right, there we are, we're back on the lapel mic and the lapel mic that I'm using is the Rode, again, not a Rode product, it is the Film Maker, the wireless audio system. So you just have a wireless transmitter on your belt that you clip on, the receiver's on top of the camera, it clicks into the hot shoe and you have a wired end from here from the lapel mic and you can see this is a lot better because like I've already demonstrated I can walk around I can face away from the camera I can work show you guys what I'm doing and uh, you can still hear me most people will forgive poor video quality but what nobody will forgive as I've discovered is poor sound so you don't have to video in 4k 720p will be good enough it's good enough to show what you want to see on a camera phone or on a laptop screen and uh, once the sound quality is good everybody seems to be happy. Nobody's really looking for 4K. And uh, yeah, so get your sound quality right and get the lapel mic, that's my recommendation, if your budget goes that far. Now, as regards the camera itself, it's a Canon 800D and I'm still using the kit lens to do everything. Again, it's a significant investment to get a DSLR camera and to buy the lenses for it. So I have an 800D, which I think in the, Amer in the States it's called a T8i or the T7i. I'll leave links again to everything in the description. You can check it out for yourselves. But the reason I went with it, it's kind of like a Canon mid-level or entry level, just above entry level Canon camera. So it's not the most expensive. It's the, it was within my budget and Canon have a fantastic auto focus system. So right now I'm looking at the small screen, at the flip out screen on this camera and I can see a box over my face and no matter where I walk, this camera is tracking my face and it is keeping me in focus. So that's the good thing about it and it's super silent. You can't hear it on the video. You cannot hear that thing autofocus. I had a Nikon camera before and it would hunt the whole time to keep in focus and you could hear the lens move and hunt and try and focus um, on the video. It would come out into the audio. So that's what I recommend to go for as a camera. I use the 800D. I think it's a fantastic camera. It shoots in 1080p, 60 frames a second, and uh, it seems to do the job. I will eventually upgrade the camera as the channel grows, but for starting out, this is good enough. 
Okay, let's wrap up this video then because it is bloody freezing in here. So hopefully this has been a good demonstration. I just wanna show you what I am using. When it comes to the software, I use DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve um, actually have a free version that you can download online. I'll leave a link in the description to that below as well. And uh, it's an unbelievably good uh, editing software. It's so good that I'm, I'm nearly on my vi video 100 now and I have not used all the features of that free software. There is a professional version available too, which you will have to pay for, but honestly, I'm not even good enough to use the free version to its full potential. It is fantastic and it's free, so that's what I recommend. Get yourself DaVinci Resolve. There is a learning curve with it, but there's plenty of YouTube videos available of people taking you through how to edit a video on DaVinci Resolve and how to use it. And uh, so yeah, that's my recommendation. So there you go. All right, guys, there we go. It has just been a quick video to answer some of the questions that I've been getting lately on about starting a YouTube channel. So I just thought I'd show you what it is I'm actually using to make these videos. So hopefully this has been helpful. This channel is all about getting information and helping people out there. So hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. I am bloody freezing now, so I'm gonna get out of here. Take it easy.